It's been a full half a year since I opened this bottle of Springbank 10, so it's time for an update. Hello and welcome back to the channel and yes, today I'm taking a look at Springbank 10 for the, well, umpteenth time. I've done an update every two months, I think, so far since opening. After this one, we are going to slow it down a bit. There'll be a nine month and then probably a 12 month at the end to kind of summarise how I really feel about this pretty legendary bottle of Scotch whiskey. Now, of course, since first trying this bottle of Springbank, my affinity with the brand has gotten ever stronger, not just because of the content of this bottle, although it certainly helped, but I've since been back to the distillery, bought a load more. You can probably see behind me if I lean that way, somewhere up there, a couple of bottles of the 15. Reviews on those are gonna come super soon. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see that. And if you wanna see this kind of staggered, long-term review of that as well. Of course, when I went to the distillery, picked up this fantastic bit of Springbank artwork. That is a legit top of a whiskey cask from them so yeah i've just been i've been living that spring bank life this year quite a lot it is a fantastic area in campbelltown if you ever get a chance to go it's just beautiful but as you can probably see it was raining a lot of the time that i was there most recently but nonetheless i had a fantastic time i will pop a link up there if i remember to the video where i actually went to the distillery most recently and had a little bit of a whiskey adventure but anyway Let's get into this. For those that don't know, this is Springbank's kind of entry-level offering. This is one of those oddities in whiskey in that it is a relatively affordable bottle. It retails, I want to say, at about 60 quid-ish, but trying to find one at retail is damn difficult. They are very, very much sought after, and the chance of you finding one on just a shelf to buy is pretty slim in the UK. I have been hearing that over in Germany, in Belgium, actually, they're not that difficult to pick up. So if you're going on an international travel, then yeah, you look may change. Just for old time's sake then, let's have another quick look at the bottle. I do like their format. Most of their bottles follow this. 10 years old, this one, 46%, which is a little on the low side, but it's not too low as we've learned. Bit of info on the back about the distillery. But otherwise, it's just a very classy looking thing. Now truthfully I've been trying not to drink out of this bottle with the exception of these interim reviews because I kind of want to let my taste buds forget about it and then be reintroduced to it fresh once again and so far I've managed to do that pretty well. I think I had one more pour out of it just after the last review but it was like a day or two after so effectively we're still doing the same thing uh, in the glass for those that haven't seen it before it is a proper non-chill filtered no color additive job nice light golden straw color to it 10 years old scotch barrels so they're not you know they're not the deepest the richest it's never going to be the most colorful there but it looks very nice indeed right then how have these aromas changed now I should say it's a hell of a lot warmer here today than it has been in any of the previous videos by a good margin, If 20 degrees to be honest. It's most likely the temperature change in this room anyway uh, from any of the other videos at least. And I have to say, it's feeling very fruity today. Don't get me wrong, it's still got that big, rich, mildewy, dank, damp, uh, I forget the phrase every time, but wet sheet blankets in an old barn vibe. Like it's, yeah, it's that, it's got that thing through and through. But today there's a little bit more citrusy note about it. A little bit more, yeah, general fruitiness, a bit of cherry perhaps. It does smell exactly how I remember, but maybe the levels in it are starting to change a bit. The, you know, the abrasiveness, the rugged farmyard lifestyle thing that it's got going on. There's no getting away from it. But it's definitely maybe not as intense as it has been previously so this will be interesting let's give it a go cheers i think my tongue is going to need just a little bit of acclimatization today for some reason but my instant takeaway is that that is becoming oddly smooth to say well just how pokey and flavorful it really is right then let's go for another sip just to see hmm this is proving to be a little bit of an oddity. Typically, people try and keep their whiskey cool because ultimately that stops the flavours running away with themselves and getting a bit too much and it's generally considered it tastes better at a lower temperature. This is not at a low temperature right now. 
this is room temperature and then some, right? It's not the best it's ever going to be in theory. But I would think at that temperature, the flavours would start to just get a bit too lively, a bit muddled and a bit kind of overwhelming in some senses. And actually, I think the opposite's happened. It seems to be a bit too easy, a bit, well, not quite spring bank enough in some way. Now, don't get me wrong. This is still absolutely fantastic. It's a very enjoyable dram regardless. But what I am learning here is do not save your spring bank 10 for the summer months unless you're lucky enough to have a cellar cold store or something like that because it just it doesn't give the dynamics the layers and layers of different flavors contrasting notes and everything else it's a little bit peated it's a little bit kind of damp dank it's a little bit fruity but to be honest it really does lose a lot of its very very specific flavor notes it's yeah it's proving just it feels tame it feels too tame and to be honest with you i'm not sure whether that is something just to do with this particular bottle or whether this is a whiskey thing in general so i'm going to grab another bottle that i've been drinking more recently that i can remember what it tastes like to see what if the same thing has happened there now then to try and keep it relatively fair i went for another scotch but away from campbelltown just in case there's something about that environment that really doesn't lend itself very well to heat this is nevis dew it's a blended whiskey rather than a single malt from the ben nevis distillery followers of this channel will probably have seen me talking about this pretty recently it's not the most fair comparison in terms of price this only cost me 25 quid, so it's less than half the price of a bottle of Springbank 10 at retail. But it does share the commonality that actually, despite being very affordable, is also pretty difficult to get from time to time. They don't make a huge amount of it, and it is well sought after. So let's give this a little pour to see, has the flavor just been dropped? This is a 40% bottle, by the way, rather than 46, so it is gonna be a bit tamer anyway, but I feel like I remember this one particularly well from recent times. So let's find out. Obligatory water break. Wildly different, these whiskies. Absolutely wildly different, these two. As they should be, you know, they're not from the same place. They're not trying to do the same thing. But in my mind, I was like, you know what? They share a lot of like nice, heathery, fruity notes, but then go their separate ways. But now I'm sticking my nose in this having tried the 10. That feels very, very sweet indeed. But anyway, let's give it a go. Cheers. Okay. It's a bit of a 50-50 situation now. I do think that some of the flavour intensity from the Nevis Dew has also been lost at heat. However, I am still able to pick up very specific notes out of it. Still full of honey, citrus, lemongrass. Still, you know, distinct. Still very distinct flavours. But for some reason... The Springbank Tan, yeah, it is really muted. So, in a strange turn of events, this bottle hasn't improved after six months, but had improved a lot up until this point, and I do think it's just the heat. So, yeah, our takeaway from today's class is, well, don't let your scotch get too hot, especially if it's a bottle of Springbank 10. I have no doubt that once the temperature cools off and we revisit this again in a few months time that it will be perfectly good if not better than it was the first time. The smoothness I have no doubt has continued like it is unbelievably smooth compared to the first bottle pour but yeah I'm not getting the wow factor in terms of layered flavors like I have done in the past which is an oddity. I would still recommend this to everyone by the way like this is not no hate to the spring bank bottle at all it's beautiful but he definitely definitely is not its friend so there you have it then today we have definitely learned how not to drink your whiskey in the summertime and that is well at room temperature or above at least for scotch we'll find out probably in another video probably the next whiskey video whether the same applies to bourbon or not i'm suspecting that might be a bit different but we shall see so stay tuned for that one but yeah apologies if it's a shorter video but there's really not a lot to tell you on this update other than yeah heat is not its friend so we will leave it there as always thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video please like it if you haven't already subscribed if you'll be so kind and i'll catch you next time cheers